Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, and thank you for joining me on another episode of Ask Sharifa Videocast. And I know, I know, I know, I say that every show is special, but guess what? This show right here is very special because we're able to sit down with one of the Ask Sharifa Videocast sponsors, supporters, friends, and just wonderful people, Fireball Approves and their CEO and CFO. So if you're tuning into the show, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask them in the comment section. I'll read them to our guests. And before we get started, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do, and that's to go ahead and share this interview because friends do not let friends miss out on Ask Sharifa. So go ahead, join us in the chat room, and I'll go ahead and introduce our guest. The CEO is Tammy Sorrento, and the new CFO, Mr. Stephen Paulson. Good afternoon. How are you? Nice. Good afternoon. Yes, it's nice to speak to both of you. I'm so excited, Tammy, because you know I love you. I love sharing with the world everything that you do. We appreciate your support. It wouldn't be Ash Sharifa Videocast without you. So I heard a little birdie told me that today is a very special day. What day is it, Tammy? Today is our second year anniversary of becoming incorporated. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Two years to some people may not seem like a very long time at all. Two years, you know, can go by in a drop of the bucket. But one of the things that I always talk to business owners about is having enough money in the bank to operate or to stay in business for longer than just say 30 days. Because <laughs> we, we usually just leap out there and, you know, start a business. So two years is definitely accomplishment that I applaud you. So talk to us before we start uh, where we are now. How did Fireball Approves get started? How did this all come about? Well, Stephen, you want to take this one? I, love I don't know. Of the story, Stephen. <laughs> I, think we, I think we kind of, we yeah. might have... I don't know. I think Stephen's stuck right there, so I don't know where Stephen is. So Stephen's here with us. Okay, so the reason I wanted to rope Stephen in is because he was involved in the first um, idea of the company, and that was because we were looking for a vacation rental. Mm -hmm. Stephen lives in South Florida. I live in North Florida. My sister lives in North Carolina. And we get together once a year. And we decided where we wanted to go last minute, like a lot of people do. And everything was filled up because we wanted to go to Key West. Mm -hmm. uh, started looking, couldn't find anything. So I went to Craigslist. And being that Stephen is a real estate broker in South Florida, his initial response was, Oh, Tammy, be careful. You know, Craigslist is full of scams, especially in Key West. Be careful. And I said, hey, you know, I, I, I know the red flags. I got this. Well, <laughs> would, you believe, would you believe that the person that I was corresponding with was a scammer? Now, luckily, I didn't lose any money. The red flags manifested themselves very um Quickly. Yes, very quickly. And yes, I know the red flags came up. So Stephen, tell us tell us your version of what happened two years ago. <laughs> well, I'm back after some quick technical difficulties, but <laughs> he's back. The short end of it is that I was right. And yes. my older sister was wrong. <laughs> so I want to make sure your viewers know that. No, the key <laughs> point is always listen to your big brother. I think that's what we're learning today. I think that added to the fuel of her fire though. Like, okay, he's right, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it up one notch higher, so. Yes, um. but I love how Stephen says that I took it personal. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I decided after that interaction and the fact that when I started Googling uh, rental scams, how prolific it is, I mean, there are families after families after families that are getting scammed. And I thought to myself, you know what? I am so happy 
and honored that I did not get scammed. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I just could not live with the idea of someone else getting scammed. So mm -hmm. that's how Fireball approves was born. It's really a rabbit hole that never ends. I mean, you could just, just get on Google and vacation rental scam. You could go for days just reading article after article, you know, news post after news post. And, uh, you know, it's, it's clearly an issue anywhere there's, you know, a lot of transient activity like Key West or South Florida. So maybe that's why I was a little bit more aware of, you know, what was going on just because I, you know, I'll see it at seven o'clock for the morning news, you know. Um, but pretty much, uh, you know, anywhere that's transient has this issue. Yes. Now, Stephen, when, when Tammy first came to you with the idea of starting a business around rental verification and protecting people from getting scammed, what were your initial thoughts? Well, I immediately went into like, you know, real estate mode, you know, and I, and I start, you know, kind of looking at it from that aspect of it. You know, she was looking at it from the, how do we stop the scammers aspect? I, I kind of went down the road of, well, how can we prove, you know, proof of concept really for the business. And so um, that was really the, the, the road that I started to go down and slowly but surely we got together conversation after conversation, you know, uh, for a long time, you know, we started to shape the business and, and how we would get, you know, from where we were to where we are today. Tammy, so working together, you, you now brought your brother on board. It's been two years and, and Go ahead. Um, so two years, but I will say that Stephen has actually been working with me. Anytime I had a question real estate related, of course I went to Stephen. So mm -hmm. what a natural transition to bring him in. And mm -hmm. one of the best decisions ever. So when you think about who's on my team, you know, what I'm selling, is trust mm -hmm. well you know i'm one person so my team i have to trust mm -hmm. with my brand and that is my daughter who's been with me since day one um she's very much behind the scenes she's a go-getter um and then my brother bringing in the real estate knowledge and the financial knowledge this is so exciting to have the people that I trust the most be on my team and that we're all working for the same purpose and that is to protect consumers. And, and I've been really kind of transitioning more from a you know behind the scenes advisor role to a much more active you know role created because of the momentum that we're seeing, you know? Yes. Now, Stephen, where would you like to see the company go? Um, it's really, for me, it's all about markets. You know, I, I think for us initially is really, you know, really market-based and, um, you know, really get into, you know, the bigger, more transient markets first, you know, and as we grow that, I think organically, um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to go, you know, different, different kinds of verticals, I guess, within the business, you know, um, but, I really want to get into those core markets, especially Florida. You know, it's such a high, you know, vacation, you know, state anyway. California, you know, kind of the same way. Uh, mm -hmm. Texas, you know. So I think if we hit those core markets first, I think we'll, we'll, we'll ultimately, you know, have to have to branch out and hit other markets, those tertiary markets. Yes, absolutely. You know, because the CFO and the CEO tend to have different views. And I'm just trying to see how, how well they mesh. So I know CFO, we're looking at different markets. Now, Tammy, where would you like to see the company go? World domination. <laughs> I think that's the fireball in you. It's, it's, the, it's the red hair. <laughs> and we don't have to watch. Do you see why we were a good match? Because, you know, I, I'm much more granular, you mm -hmm. know? And Tammy's just like, okay, let's just take a whole world on at one time. <laughs> Absolutely. But I don't think, uh, you know, and maybe this isn't my industry, but I don't, I can't tell you any company that's really offering this service. And, you know, I hear of the LifeLock kind of companies where you want to make sure that your information is protected online. 
but to actually have someone review and analyze an online listing or a rental property listing to make sure it's authentic. I think that's incredible. You're offering a service that's new. And, and something to keep in mind, you know, it, it's, it's a situation where, you know, we're, they're actual human beings reviewing this data. It's a little old school, right? I mean, all we hear about is algorithm this, algorithm that, you know, you actually have a private investigative firm, you know, actually putting their eyes on the transaction. And, you know, it's not insurance, but I always say it's assurance. Mm -hmm. you know, anytime you can kind of mitigate some of those potential risks of, you know, losing what could be thousands of dollars in some cases. You know, I mean, I, I just think it's a home run. It's a, it's a great space for us to be in. It's a way for us to kind of, you know, be passionate about something, right? Fight back and, and, and at the same time, you know, have a business. So I, I think it's a win-win from that standpoint. They always say, do what you love uh, to do and it won't be a job, right? That's right. If you do what you love, the money will follow. And I love the aspect of, you know, the, you're a licensed private investigator and people always want to do the whole cheaters thing. Like, I'll oh, give me a PI, see if my husband is cheating, you know, see if my girlfriend is, is, has a, a, another boyfriend. But what about the things that really matter to us as far as our homes and our security? You know, let, let's take a look and make sure those things are legitimate and authentic. And as a matter of fact, you know, like you said, this is something brand new. So what you just described, that's not my passion. Mm -hmm. My passion is protecting people mm -hmm. and their finances. I mean, when I read a story of a single mother who went from one state to the next state, she had the lockbox code, she let herself in, she paid the deposit and the first month of rent only to find out that she gave that money to a scammer and she turned on her utilities. Imagine the financial commitment there only to be told that if you aren't dealing with the right person, you have to get out. That is what I'm fighting. Mm. Now, I know we can't give all the information. You're, you have your website, fireballapproves.com. You do have a new book that's coming up pretty soon. So much going on. But I would love to give at least a little bit of information on things that people can be aware of. Because in our last interview, one of the things that I spoke about was I was actually scammed, actually scammed um, when I was looking for an apartment. And the main reason, you know, looking back, I know it happened is because I personally was in a rush. I wanted to move, I needed to move immediately, I needed to find something, and no matter what the person said, I was gonna go through with it because I needed this apartment, it was the best offer, best rate, he was willing to work for me, work with me, and then he's like, oh, meet me in this parking lot. So I'm like, okay, so he was on his way between here and there, and meet me here in this parking, parking lot, and I'll give you the key. And I, I'm, no warning signs go off, I just think, okay. So I go there, it's $40, $40 deposit for the key. He lets me take a picture of him. He lets me take a picture of his license plate. He gives me the key, I give him the $40 cash, and I go to the address where he, he given me, and it wasn't even, the key didn't even work. He basically had bought some little fake key for a couple of dollars, giving it to me just to make a quick 40 bucks. And I knew for sure, because he allowed me to take a picture of him and a picture of his license plate, he couldn't possibly be a scammer. I mean, what are some of the things to look out for? Well, to looking at listings, um, what you're gonna wanna do and this is something that this should be automatic when you're looking at listings. You're looking at photographs of the property. First thing you're going to want to do is reverse image search. Now, here's what you're going to find out. If someone is renting a property for vacation or long term, it doesn't even matter they generally have this posting on more than one platform. It could be on uh, Zillow, it could be on realtor.com, it could be on Hotpads, um, you name it. So 
very rarely have I seen a listed only on one uh, platform. So if you want to reverse image search, look at the other ads. If they are more expensive than the one you're looking at, nine times out of 10, and I would say 9.99 times out of 10, you're looking at a fraudulent listing. Mm -hmm. so that is one way to definitely narrow down your search. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, then the reality is if it fits on one, if it's on realtor.com, it'll end up on Zillow and vice versa. So a lot of those sites have like sharing agreements, data sharing type agreements and stuff. So, um, you know, the trick I think is with those like Craigslist type, you know, ads. Those are the ones where, you know, it's a lot more challenging. It's a lot more of a wild, wild west type situation. So when you find these listings, Tammy, what happens? Do you, I mean, do you call the, the scam artists and, and, and tell them, no, 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 you don't do that? What happens next? What I do is I request either the person that I'm doing the inquiry for, or I do it myself, especially if it's a Craigslist, mm -hmm. is I will report the ad to the platform. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I report them to the FBI. Mm -hmm. I am not playing around. You, you seem so fearless. You you seem, I mean, and you all, you have this, this nice, you like a librarian. I, I almost want to call it like this nice little safe, little hopeful woman, you know, and then the, I'm going to the FBI. Like, where, where do you get the courage, the passion to, to even do this? Well, after almost being scammed, mm -hmm. uh, like Stephen said, I took it personal and I mm -hmm. thought, you know what, if I can do something about this, I'm going to, mm -hmm. and that is the mission. The mission is to keep people safe. And what I love is when I get an inquiry like we did um, yesterday, as a matter of fact, this is how great of a team I have. The inquiry came from California, Woodlands, California. Mm -hmm. the, my customer was looking at a rental property in Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. So the inquiry came in at two o'clock in the morning, yesterday morning. My daughter, Ashley, immediately received the inquiry, started working it. Then when I woke up and realized we had an order, I jumped on it. Stephen and I worked on it in tandem and we were able, I mean, in less than, what would you say, Stephen, like 10 hours, we had spoken to the property owner and it was good to go. But I mean, there were some things that I had not seen before, like it was a real a realtor that was listing it, but they had taken the listing down. Mm -hmm. So that, that, I mean, every single one is so very different. So I just love, um, you know, I love catching the bad guys, but at the same time, I love being able to say to someone, hey, you're good to go. Yes. And, and this person reported back, she said, thank you so very much for your services. And I know that we're doing the right thing when we are getting orders from people that do not know us personally because you know when it first started you know it was a lot of my friends and family mm -hmm. that you know wanted to use my services but now we're getting people that are just seeing us on social media and what have you and like she said she said you know they want me to put down a deposit but I haven't seen the property yet so that's why I came to you and it's like wow it's working I love it yeah well, and you got to know, too, you know, these people are moving halfway across the country. People that are coming for vacation rentals, most of the time are coming from halfway across the country, right? So, I mean, these are like big things. They're big transactions, even if it's not just the money, right? I mean, maybe somebody can wake up and lose a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, so be it. But, you know, imagine having a vacation completely derailed, you know, all of your expectations, all of the, what you've built up for a year 
um, just to have it all smashed and, and thrown away because, you know, you, you, you didn't, weren't quite able to, you know, do some of these verifications or have the know-how um, like we do to, you know, get everything verified and checked out. Right, to come all the way across the country and have nowhere to stay. I mean, that would be the most horrible, you know, not only do you not have someone to stay, but your money is gone because you've already spent your, your money towards one property and that was a scam. And it's just horrible, horrible, horrible that people intentionally do this to other people. So again, if you are just now tuning in to Ask Sharifa Videocast, I, of course, am your host, Sharifa Hardy. And I have a very special show for you today. I'm speaking with the CEO and CFO of Fireball Approves. That's Tammy Sorrento and Stephen Paulson. And I want to thank everyone who is watching. Janice Eckert, Francis, Eugene Powell, Stephanie Willis, Nakia Brown, a couple of people tuning in. Eugene says, hey, Sharifa. And yes, there are a lot of scams in the real estate business. So people are tuning in. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please feel free to ask them in the comment section. I'll go ahead and read them to our guests. And don't forget to go ahead and share this interview. Now, what it must be rather intriguing, almost like a detective who done it mystery when you're trying to figure out if a person, if a listing rather is a scam or if it's actual real listing. So, I mean, there has to be a sense of pride when you accomplish it or when you figure it out and when you actually help and protect someone. It, 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 absolutely. And like I said, every single one is different. I would say that one of the most challenging ones, and I just feel so honored that uh, my customer trusted in us. He was sending his daughter to a college in New York City. So the student housing was mm -hmm. on Wall Street. Okay. And that, Stephen and I worked, real, we really worked double time on that because I wasn't only verifying the one ad. I verify, we verified the website that was listing the property. Mm -hmm. We checked out the, the actual building owner. We checked out the property manager. We made sure that that location um, was zoned for student housing. So, I mean, there were so many layers to this, but it was absolutely gratifying to be able to report back that it was a good listing. And even when I spoke to the property manager and told him who I was, where I was from, why I was calling, he said, oh my gosh, that's amazing. He said, we have so many scams in New York City. Well, you know what? I'm here to tell you they're everywhere. Right. They're not limited to just one area. They are everywhere. And even not even just in our country. They are literally everywhere because it's a it's a crime of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And no one, like you said, has really gone after this market. Mm -hmm. And it, it really does make you feel like you're making a difference. And isn't that what it's all about? I believe it is. I believe that's what business and life and just being good, a good person is all about. But I want to talk a little bit again about your two year journey. I know this is a new industry in general that, that you're bringing to the world, but in business, what are some of the things that you learned over the first two years? Were there moments where you said you kind of wondered, like, Tammy, what am I doing? Is this real? Should I just give it all up? Were there <laughs> moments where, where you, you said, hey, I got this. This is a wonderful business and it's working. Were there moments where you, you learned, okay, well, if I would have done this a little bit different, then this would have been better. What have you learned in those two years? Well, I'll tell you one thing, and I hope that anyone that's thinking about starting a business will learn from my trial and error, is you have to realize, and you have to be very self-evident, what am I good at? Mm -hmm. What am I not good at? Now, if you're starting a business, you're going to do it all. Mm -hmm every bit of it. Even what you're not good at, you're going to learn. 
how to do it. But does it mean that you're doing it the best that you can? Probably not. Because like I am a investigator. That's what I've done for uh, claim adjusting, which 90% of adjusting is investigation. Then when I started the company, I became a private investigator. So that's my passion. Um, marketing. There's so many different aspects. And when you think about opening a brick and mortar office, the challenges are much different when you're offering something nationwide. Mm -hmm. So how do you get in front of everyone? How do you get in front of the ones that need your services? Because I tell you what, that's what breaks my heart is we've been in business for two years and yet the scams are still happening. So you know what? As usual, I take that personal. Mm -hmm. I think that's should take Did someone know about me, mm -hmm. you know, before they lost their money and were hugely um, inconvenienced? Mm -hmm. So what I have learned is you have to be flexible. You have to learn how to maneuver in this new, you know, technology is not new, but the way we use it is different than we did even five years ago. So like this, we are podcasting. And I have to say, I love the fact that I brought Stephen on because it, he's amazing, absolutely amazing. And his baptism by fire with podcasting was just about what two weeks ago Stephen a week and a half ago yeah something like that hey. I had I, you know I can't be everywhere at one time so I had this podcast scheduled and I had to reschedule it well then again it was coming up and I had something else that I had to do and I said Stephen please take this podcast for me and he was like, okay, but you know, I've never done that before. So I sent him one of my old podcasts and I was like, you got this because I know he has the ability, but until you actually do it, it's nerve wracking. You're putting yourself out there in front of everyone and you're saying, hey, I have something worthwhile. This is why we're doing this. But you know, that's not in everyone's comfort level. So that is something that I would say is to learn what everyone, what your customer, where they go when they're looking for your services. And that has been the biggest challenge for me because for the first year, Sharifa, no one really understood. And I was having a hard time because I'm too close to it to explain it to someone that doesn't understand what we do. But mm -hmm. now, you know, it's definitely evolving. We're getting much more organic um, visitors to our website and our Facebook page where we talk about all sorts of scams, you know, not just about real estate because not everyone's going to be in the market for a real estate transaction. So in the spirit of we want to protect people, we're going to protect people and give them tips and tricks and um, ideas and content on all sorts of scams. So it's even looking out, out of the box for even what you provide. You know, you can give content on information that is going to protect someone, it may not make them a customer today, but it may make them a customer six months from now because they're going to remember that you gave them good information. Well, and the other thing too, as part of this business, is the education component, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we with technology, you know, it's like you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we were all told never get into a stranger's car, right? Now we're all hopping into Ubers. You know, <laughs> so, like, you, know, you think about this vacation rental stuff, right? It's just like new on the scene. It's like, oh, it's cheaper. It's bigger units. It's better, more, you know, better location, right? Let's just 
push the button and do it, right? But then there's, you know, for us, there's that education component of, hey, you know, they're not all created equally. You know, this, this, there's some, you know, real pitfalls and some things out there that you got to be careful of. And, and so that's why I know Tammy is taking it very seriously to, you know, really pushing that education component and hitting all the podcasts and, you know, of course, on her Facebook page, you know, you know best practices or other scams. And, you know, um, kind of going back to your original question as well, you know, for your listeners, embrace failure. You have a license to screw up. You have a license to learn from your mistakes, from, from your bad choices. The key is just learning from them and, and sharpening your tools, you know, and so when you come out the other side, you're, you're all better for it. And, you know, over time, you'll take that big, you know, big square rock and you'll actually shape it into something. Words of wisdom, words of advice. But Stephen, let me ask you this. One of the things that you mentioned was to a certain extent, you were a board of advisors or advisor to Fireball Approves. Were there any instances in the past two years where you wanted to go in a different direction and then you ran into the Fireball? How, how does that play out, play out between the CEO and the CFO? Um, I don't want to say, you know, I want to stay in our lane, but I really kind of want to perfect, you know, a, a small, a, a few verticals versus, you know, checking everything. You know, I really kind of want to perfect, you know, the vacation rental aspect, student housing, anything really real estate related, since that's my background anyway. So I think that's the easiest thing to, to protect and, and, to, and to address. Um, I know she's, you know, got a program for, you know, traveling nurses and, um, you know, other kind of, you know, peer-to-peer, -peer, I guess, transactions, you know, cars and, you know, that sort of thing. But um, for me, that's always been a big part of my advisory is just, hey, let's stay in our lane here. Let's perfect the real estate related stuff. You know the websites, the, the branding, the media, and you know which is that we're doing that now, and we're we're seeing the momentum from it. Yes, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful advice. Again, if you are just now tuning in, we are speaking with Fireball Approves, and we are discussing the rental verification services as well as the new announcement of the new CFO, Mr. Stephen Paulson, coming on board of Fireball Approved. So definitely welcome to Stephen. And we've been speaking with Tammy Sorrento. A few more people joining us in the chat section. If you have questions, if you have comments, please feel free to ask them because we have Fireball Approved sitting down with us right now on Ask Sharifa Videocast. So it seems like this wonderful, I mean, almost one of those companies that you just want to be a part of because of the camaraderie. You know, everyone works, wants to work at Google. Everyone, you know, they used to want to work at Facebook. I don't know anymore, but, uh, you know. <laughs> they've been under fire a lot lately, haven't they? <laughs> yes. I, I, so I don't know what the, the trend is as far as working at Facebook, but Fireball approves definitely seems like there's this great energy, this great camaraderie where it's like, let's go and help the world. It's kind of vibe that you put off. What do, what do you think, Tim? I would say you're absolutely right. And, you know, and it means so much more because I'm in it. Mm -hmm. You know, I sleep, eat, drink, fireball of Bruce. Mm -hmm. uh, but to hear what other people see, mm -hmm. that's what I learned from. So I appreciate that. And that really is, I mean, anytime that you're doing something good, mm -hmm. it, it, that keeps you motivated. That keeps you going. Yes, I can definitely see that. But I, I know from Fireball Approves and what you do is going to be that aha eureka moment where the world just wakes up and this is a standard, you know, because one of the things that Stephen said was that, no, you know, you didn't want to ride with strangers. Now everyone gets into an Uber. It's just common. Everyone does it, you know. So now doing rental verification prior to renting anything, I believe should be standard. It's just a given, just like this is a part of the process. You, you looking for apartment, you found an apartment or you found a vacation home that you like to rent. This is the next step. You definitely have to make sure that it's fireball approved. But we, I know we spent a lot of time talking about the rental verification, but you also have another service in which you list or you, you vet property owners. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please, Tammy? Well, that was something that happened organically. Um, 
when we first started. And of course, you learn from every interaction you have with customers. So for the ones that were good, as I'm talking to the owners, I realized that they have a pain point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the people that are losing their money, you know, as renters, they're not the only victims. Mm -hmm. So then I thought out of the box again, and I thought, hey, while I'm already at it, wouldn't it be a good thing to have an accreditation where we do pre-vet mm -hmm. uh, property owners? And that has just been phenomenal because mm -hmm. then they have a way without giving too much personal information because I did a Facebook poll and my question was, if you own a vacation rental property and someone asks for you to prove that you are the owner, are you comfortable in releasing like your mortgage statement or you know any type of personal information? And I have to say like 95% said, no, I'm not comfortable. Well, how about, you know, applying for an accreditation that you can say, hey, I am legit. I am fireball approved. So you're applying with a company that is safeguarding your information. And at the end of the day, isn't that all a renter wants is to know that they are dealing with the true owners? Because you hear the stories over and over and over again of people getting swindled and it doesn't have to be that way. It's our new norm. I mean, everyone realizes that there are um, loopholes that people do get burned with these transactions, well, you know what? We don't have to stand for that. That is definitely true. We don't have to stand for that. Now, Stephen, I mean, it's so much passion going on in the company, so many changes. You have rental verification, you have the um, accreditation for the renters. Do you ever feel that this is an insurmountable option, um, uh, excuse me, an insurmountable process? Like there are so many people being scammed, I don't know if we'll be able to make a dent in it. Or do you sit down when you came on board the company and said, let's lay out this five-year plan of how we're going to attack these markets, which markets we're going to approach, and how we're going to get visibility within these mar markets? Sure. So it's absolutely scalable. I think that... Um, as we come across, because you know, there's probably a thousand different combinations, right? A scammer could use to try to pull one off on you. And I think the more we see them and the more we gain experience, the you know, more streamlined our process becomes. You know, when we get to a place where we can't streamline anymore, right? Then we'll really have an idea on, you know, where we can, how we can scale. But for right now, each time we learn just a little bit more, we go just a little bit faster and. You know, um, we streamline things. So, you know, that, that process is ongoing and, you know, hopefully we'll have it all ironed out over the course of the next year or two. But, you know, right now it's kind of a lost leader for us because of the amount of time it's taken. But it, uh, you know, for instance, that one she was talking about in New York City, you know, that was a sublet. You know, that was a challenge, you know, but mm -hmm. now we'll know going forward, you know, kind of some, some, some of the right questions to ask to move things along a little faster. So, um, you know, definitely moving along, definitely scalable, and definitely, uh, you know, we're, we're sharpening our, our tools. <laughs> so when you say it was a sublet, it, it was a little bit more difficult because it was a sublet, if I understand you correctly, is because being that it was a sub, if it was sublease, you're not dealing directly with the owner and you're not dealing directly with the person who's, who initially rented it. So now you have middlemen in the process. So it makes it more difficult to get to it. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. That was the challenge. You got, you know, the building owner, right? And then they say, okay, this block of apartments we're going to have a master lease for, you know, so they're, you know, and so that person is, you know, taking care of the student housing aspect of it. And that was a challenge. Adding that extra layer of verification and, you know, calling and that sort of thing, that, that's a real challenge. So as a consumer out there, uh, you know, kind of doing that on their own without having the experience of, of myself and Tammy, um, it's, it's, it's almost insurmountable, 
you know, to, to have to try to work your way through a situation like that. But you were able to successfully do it. So again, I applaud you. Everything you're doing seems as if you're taking the right steps, the right processes. You're growing at a steady pace. You get to two years. You say, you know what? Let's expand. Let's bring on a CFO to continue to grow the company. You have a team. Your daughter, Ashley, helps you. So it, it seems as if you're definitely on the right track. And I, I think I think what you've accomplished so far is amazing because I personally might have gotten to a certain point in the first probably 30 to 60 days where I said, you know what? It's way too many scammers in the world. It's just little old me. Let me just put down this fight, give up and, and not take on this challenge and not try to slay this dragon. But you kept going. Two years later, you're still here. You're still growing. You're still expanding. I, for one, think that's wonderful. Well, thank you. As a matter of fact, when I first started, I went on a, the Craigslist forum, mm -hmm. and that's where, you know, some real techies, they chat and whatnot. So I went in saying, hey, you know, we know that there's a lot of scams on Craigslist. Well, guess what? I'm starting a company to help with that. And the response that I received, you would have thought that it would have shut me down. Because mm -hmm. it was it was just to the point of harassing mm -hmm. and threatening. Oh wow! But but I thought to myself, you know what? I struck a chord. Oh wow! I stuck. I definitely struck a chord with with uh, with more than one person too. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna ride this and see, you know, how far I can go. So whereas someone else may have said, oh, this is dangerous, this is that, you know, what have you, I thought to myself, okay, you know what, you can, you can think that, you can say that, whatever, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Stephen, we're going to take off your CFO hat for a minute, and we're going to throw on the big brother hat right there. Now, Tammy says she, you know, she doesn't feel threatened. She doesn't feel scared at all. My brother, my big brother lives in Australia. And he, he says, Sharifa, you go where angels fear to tread. And I'm like, I, you know, that's just me. But with your big brother hat, do you get a little, honestly, honestly, now, do you get a little worried for Tammy? Steven? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> my, older, my older sister, though. Yeah, oh, I, I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, then listen to Big Sis. Big right. Sis knows what she's talking about. But the brother hat. We'll just throw on a, on a brother hat. Do you, I mean, are you, are you? I couldn't get in her way on my side. She, she's a pit bull. She, uh, she's all over. She's an amazing, amazing woman. And uh, I think she'll be just fine. She takes all the precautions necessary keep herself shielded you know mm -hmm. i know she's she's had direct contact with multiple you know scammers we'll say but i don't think scammers are you know i, I think their number one thing is to hide in the shadows mm -hmm. so I, I i have no issue there i mean it, it would be ridiculous for them to ever be known you know mm -hmm. that was the last thing on their business plan <laughs> the scammer business plan line item 10. <laughs> Why do you think you get all the robocalls? There's a business plan behind. <laughs> that, that's a good way to think about it. Tammy Sorrento's on their business plan. No. <laughs> it, 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 I, but I, I just, you're a fireball for sure. You're going after these scammers. You're not taking any prisoners. You're going to the FBI. I mean, you're, you're, you're definitely amazing. And I, I love you. Now, we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. I want to thank Nakia, Dahlia, Nod, Charles Calloway, a couple of people tuning in to the show. Thank you for your support. I greatly appreciate it. But we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I like to do at the end of every show is just allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to our audience and let them know what you want them to take away from your interview. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow Stephen a few minutes to, to, to speak to the audience, and then we're going to allow Tammy to come and bring it on home. Well, I don't need a really a few minutes. I'm probably, I hopefully will be a little, a little succinct in that. You know, just, just find something you're passionate about. Work it. Learn about it. Don't give up. I'll tell you, Tammy, 
almost kind of shamed me into being taking a much more active role in the company, you know, because she just wouldn't give up. She just never gave up. I'm like, is it going to end? You know, <laughs> I just think she's, you know, like, you know, really fed up and like things just aren't going quite. Then we start getting the momentum and things start moving along. And, and sometimes you got to have that blind faith. If you don't have that blind faith, you're not going to get there. Yes. Wonderful. Tammy? Uh, definitely. I echo what Steven said because, you know what, that's true. That is the not giving up. I know that we're needed in this world that we live in now. Um, and of course, the biggest challenge is getting in front of everyone so that they know that they don't have to worry about scammers. So it is the, when you realize what it is that you want to produce, whether it's a product, a service, it is the don't give up. You know, find a problem that needs a solution. Come up with a solution and get in front of as many as you can. So that's what I'm gonna ask our viewers today. You, I guarantee that you have a family member, a friend that is looking for a rental property. Cause you know what, millennials, they are renting, they're not buying. Um, so I'm going to ask you to also share in our vision. And that is join our Facebook page at Fireball Approves. You're gonna get tips and tricks on all sorts of scams, but ultimately please share our information because like i said every time i'm i'm looking at articles and accounts of people that are getting scammed when i could have avoided that for them and we just need to get the word out yeah absolutely there's more people in that running i mean down here the retirees are moving into these really, really swanky like rental communities that have great walkability, you know, near downtown. So, um, so it's kind of a rental, you know, country right now. Yeah, it really is. Yes, it really is. So wonderful words of advice. Please go to Fireball Approves on Facebook. Definitely want to go to the website, fireballapproves.com and join the mission. I want to thank you both for being guests on today's episode of Ask Sharifa Videocast. Thank, thank you. you for having us, Sharifa. You're the best. You are very welcome. Thank you. And thank you for everyone for tuning in to today's show. Please go ahead and share this interview. And this is the part right here where I would typically thank our sponsor. So guess what? I'm going to go ahead and thank Fireball Approves for being the <laughs> sponsor of Ask Sharifa Videocast and making all of this possible. Before you rent any property, whether it's a vacation or an apartment, please make sure it's an actual legitimate listing and not a scam. And you can do that at fireballapproves.com to be a guest for sponsorship opportunities or just to watch more of my interviews, visit the website at ashsharifa.com. Until then, everyone have a wonderful day. Bye now.